Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about two back-to-back -back, uh, reviews here of uh, all ages books that feature Venom and Spider-Man. Uh, the first one came out last week and that is uh, Spider-Man Venom Double Trouble. I do have the regular cover here and I got an Art Adams variant, I believe, who did this one. Uh, it's really gorgeous and I think they're going to be connecting. So all four covers will connect. So I'll try to get all four of them if I can. Um, and that way I can have two digital codes for each issue to give out. So that's that's what we're going to do in this episode, but, but before we get to digital codes, we're also going to talk about and discuss and review Marvel Action Spider-Man number 11, which already came out, which I'm surprised because the other one just came out like two weeks ago, and then apparently there's going to be a third part to this. I thought it was only going to be a two-parter, but I believe the uh, the author or the writer of this series mainly does three-issue arcs, so issues one through three were one story and so on and so forth, so obviously 10, 11, 12 are all going to be one story, and they're wrapping up this book, so this will be the end of this version of the book. Book. I guess they're going to do like a series two or a volume two and they're going to renumber it and they're bringing in a new writer and stuff. Uh, but I really like this book. We're going to talk about that big time. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to start with Double Trouble. Uh, and I am going to try to keep these uh, semi spoiler free, but we're probably going to get into some spoilers. But these aren't going to be full discussions. These are just going to be quick reviews. And I know I don't do a ton of reviews. And I promise you, after this season, you'll probably see even less than what I, because obviously I've been doing a lot of the Absolute Carnage reviews and reviewing a lot of new stuff that's coming out because I don't want to spoil them too much. Uh, but that's going to change next season. Next season, I'll probably, you know, I'll wait till things come out and trade and then we'll do full discussions on them. So I'm not even going to keep up with monthly books with Venom in it uh, next season. We're just going to wait until they come out and trade and then we'll discuss them then. So that way we can talk about full spoilers and dive into the characters because that's kind of the whole point of this show. I mean, you know, I'll probably review the movies and anything with Venom that's outside of the movies, like the cartoon stuff. I'll probably review those and do discussions separate, you know, do one discussion video, one review. Uh, but I, you know, I'm doing all the absolute carnage stuff i'm just like yeah i'm not really a reviewer i like discussing things and discussing why i like them and sharing that with you and then hearing your thoughts uh, down below in the comment section so that's kind of what i want to get back to next season so we're not going to do a ton of reviews and so um except for maybe when these come out uh but only only because we're starting it now and it's a four issue series so you know, we probably won't get to, or actually not even, because I might take a break after, um, you know, f episode 450. I think we're going to take the whole month of December off of Venom stuff. So by that time, issue 12 of this will have come out, and then at least, you know, maybe issues 2 and 3 but before we get back in January of this will have come out. So maybe we'll just wait until the fourth you know, issue comes out, and we'll just do a full discussion on, uh, you know, on issues 2 through 4 of these, and then the final part of this one. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but I am going to cut down on reviews big time especially talking about newer books right when they come out we're going to cut down on that as far as venom stuff goes we're going to cut down on that uh, very soon so um all right double trouble so this is a very kid focused book all right, so if you're out there and you're you know in, you're like me you know if you're in your 30s or even if you're younger if you're in your 20s and stuff i don't know how much you'll like this. I guess it depends on personal taste and how much you're willing to, you know, suspend your, you know, uh, you know, your knowledge of the characters, because what happens in this, it's pretty simple. And I mean, like I said, but as we get into it, boom, there's one digital code we're going to give away right there uh, before we get into spoilers or minor spoilers. And then also uh, after I'll let that run for about 30 seconds and then we'll give out the second one right after. So we have two codes for this. So grab one and then save the other for someone else. And if you get the codes, let me know down below uh, and let me know what your review of these books are if you got these codes. So the writer is Mariko Tamaki and artist is Gurihiru and I believe some of you guys had mentioned the artist before on other books and uh, and I had was like oh I haven't seen their work. Uh, I do like the art actually. It's very kid-ish. Um, it's very animated style. It's almost like they're doing their own version of like an animated series or animated cartoon um, but with their own designs and stuff and I think it kind of works. It's kind of fun uh, but the storyline is very different. We have a uh, this, I guess the setup for this is that it's Freaky Friday. Uh, I'm not going to say how they switch minds, but Spider-Man and Venom switch brains and they go into each other's bodies by the end of this book. And that's going to be the story moving forward is that it's Spider-Man in Venom's body and Eddie Brock, you know, or Venom into, you know, or Eddie Brock, at least in Spider-Man's body. So I'm wondering with the symbiote, because they don't really talk I mean, the you don't get a lot of symbiotes perspective on this because remember when eddie brock puts his mind somewhere wouldn't that mean the symbiote mind might go with his since they're kind of bonded 
So I don't know. So I don't know if, uh, you know, we'll find out in the next issue if that's the case or if Spider-Man in Eddie's body is hearing the symbiote in his mind. So I, I don't know. We're going to have to find that out in the next issue. So that I can't spo spoil really here. I can only speculate because I don't know what's going to happen in the next issue. Uh, but it does have some fun stuff in it. It's Green Goblin versus Venom. You can see a cool fight between the two of them. Um, and then you find out that <laughs> Venom is currently Spider-Man's roommate. And they literally live as Spider-Man and Venom not Peter Parker and Eddie Brock. They don't really touch too much on those sides of their personalities or, or their alter egos. They don't really touch too much on that, but it's literally Venom in Spider-Man's apartment and he has his own room and Spider-Man's like, hey, you know, Venom, you know, you got to kind of pay rent. He's like one of those roommates and, and Venom's like, oh yeah, you know, I appreciate you letting me stay here and you know, all this and I, I promise I'll help you out and I'll, I'll pitch in. But right now I'm just having a tough day. And then meanwhile, other, somewhere else in the building, Spider-Gwen just lives in the building as Spider-Gwen. So again, not really a focus on, you know, dual personalities or, or alter egos. And again, I think this is just because it's really just for kids and it's very simplified in a lot of ways so um so yeah it doesn't have gwen coming to peter's apartment it has spider gwen or a ghost spider coming to his apartment as spider-man and she's saying like oh you know venom throws trash out and there's like some weird goo like drool or whatever on that trash um and it's turned my plants into like uh, monsters little shop of horror monsters so uh yeah there's some fun things it's almost like a little board game like a shoots and ladder kind of thing so yeah they do fun things with the art i do like the art style and the writing is just very simplified like i said if you are not a, like if you're looking for deeper stuff with spider-man and, and venom and these characters and if you like them on that level like i do um you probably won't get much out of this and i would say i wouldn't feel like i got too much out of this either i just it was fun to look at and read um but ultimately i was like all right they're roommates I, I mean i get what they're going for and it's kind of silly and it's kind of fun in that regard but for me i'm just like ah, i like seeing the duality of venom i like seeing the eddie brock side you know talk with the symbiote side i like to see all that and if you're a fan of that you're not going to get really any of that here but hopefully that'll pop up more in the next uh you know issues uh i hope anyway um but yeah so then spider-man by the end of this spider man and venom switch minds freaky friday style and uh, then trouble ensues and that's where we're gonna go from here on so yeah fun book uh, i'm actually looking forward to this i'm so glad they're bringing symbiote spider-man back uh, they're gonna uh, peter david and greg land are reuniting once again and they're gonna tell a hobgoblin story which is cool because i love the mysterio story they did uh, with the previous symbiote spider-man so this will be cool because next season and again i'll probably wait for all five issues to come out or a trade to come out um, or maybe we'll review issue one and then we'll wait for two through whatever you know we'll we'll do those all together after they come out and trade uh but yeah symbiote spider-man alien reality so a little plug for that book there make sure you go put on your pull list because that first series i thought was really good and i'm looking forward to seeing more and i love the hobgoblin so i can't wait to see what they do with that um but yeah double trouble pick it up either cover i think there's a third cover too so there's these two covers i know i think i saw a third one that was uh actually done by the uh, you know the artist of the book or hero did this cover but i think there was another one with Venom and Spider-Man like swinging through the city together um, as a third cover. So you can pick up any of those covers if you want. I thought it was a fun book, but I will say not a lot there substance wise, especially for people like us who like to go into these deep dives. Like it's easier to review that book than do a discussion on it because there's, I mean, all I, I'll just, I don't have much to add, you know, in a discussion video for that. I just could just review it easily and go, hey, it's a fun book. It's got good artwork and I recommend picking it up. So yeah, definitely go get it out there if you're just a completionist and you want all things Venom and definitely get those connecting Art Adams covers because I can't wait to see what the other ones look like. I think they're going to do, you know, other characters too and I'd like to see other symbiotes and you know merge them all together i'm sure spider-man will be on a cover and stuff like that too so yeah i'm, I'm excited for those uh, if nothing else at least i'll get those cool connecting covers and the artwork's fun to look at um but now let's move on to something that i will sink my teeth into a little bit i do not have a digital code for this because again this is uh, actually released by idw so they don't uh, really do digital codes for their marvel books uh, but this has two covers we have the main cover which is the one i have um, and then there's the john boy myers cover which just looks awesome um, and unfortunately, I, you know, I couldn't find it. I, I was surprised because the last issue that came out of this, there was only like two or three copies at my local comic store. This time there was a stack of these. There was probably like 10 or 11 of them um, just sitting there. And I was like digging through them, hoping that I could find the variant cover, uh, but unfortunately I could not. Uh, so this one we're going to do less of a review and more of a discussion on. Um, but uh, as a review, I would say this book was fun, just like the first issue was. And hopefully you guys find a copy of this. And I found out, I think in the last uh, episode where we reviewed issue 10, 
I said you can find them on Comixology. That's actually not true. It, uh, I guess these books weren't selling well. So after issue six, they stopped putting them on Comixology. I don't know if they IDW plans to, or if they it's just like a an error up you know uploading the files or something. I don't know what's going on there, but I couldn't find issue seven through ten of the series on Comixology because I was actually going to go back and read all of them in digital form, uh, but I couldn't find them. I only found issues one through six. So uh, I would say you gotta kind of find this in print if you can. And I'm sure if you don't find it at your comic store, you could probably find it on eBay. I think uh, the last issue is going for like ten, eleven bucks. Some Somewhere around there so not too bad it's not marked up too much uh, but uh, I don't know that could have changed the last time I checked was like a week and a half ago so I don't know if it's gone up from there uh, but the artwork in this one I really like too uh, Delilah S Dawson is the writer she's like a, a novelist and she's uh, writing this series and artist is David Pinto who we talked about in the last episode and the colors are done really well by Valentina Pinto and the, like I said just looks fun and it picks up right where the last issue left off where Venom standing over spider Gwen and so, you know, Venom gets away, Spider-Gwen goes back to Spider-Man and or Peter, and she's like, hey, look, we owe Miles an apology. It turns out it wasn't him. It's some new spider guy with spider-ish type powers named Venom, and he said some lab, like, screwed him over and, and took his, you know, laptop and phone and all of his, like, information, because he's a journalist, like a, like an up-and-coming journalist or whatever, and he's trying to break the case on this, you know, lab, which we still don't know if his life foundation, we don't know what it is, um, but they... You know, he they, apparently they found an alien and Eddie Brock wanted to break this story. And because uh, he didn't and they took his information and made him look crazy and made him look like he was an insane person uh, who was making stuff up and it kind of ruined his reputation. And then the symbiote he was trying to make a story on broke out somehow and bonded with them. And so, like I said, it's kind of like movie Venom in a way. It's kind of fun. And so uh, so Spider-Man and Gwen are talking like we owe Miles an apology. So they go back and apologize him, uh, apologize to him. And there's some fun banter there because Miles is like, can you guys grovel just a little bit more? Because seriously, you suspected me of being a villain. And that's messed up, you know, like, I can't believe you would think that of me. And he's like, it made me feel really alone. So there was some cool, you know, like a little bit of drama there, teen drama and stuff. Uh, but then ultimately they find Eddie Brock and they're like, you know, tracking him down. And he, they come across him attacking another lab. And uh, in this lab, though, is a supervillain, one that we haven't been introduced to yet in the Marvel action series. Uh, but uh, this villain, Venom, says, hey... This guy has information. He knows, you know, his boss is who I'm after. And I believe this guy has information on what happened to me and on the symbiote. And, uh, you know, the villain turns out to be Dr. Octavius. And he puts on his tentacles and he starts to fight back. And he's fighting against Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, or Ghost Spider, um, and Miles Morales. He's fighting all three of them and Venom. And uh, they're like, what do we call him? robo -Oc? Like, they're all trying to come up with a name for him. And uh, and it was, it's kind of fun because obviously they haven't met Dr. Octopus yet. So they're all kind of trying to come up with a name and they're trying to one-up each other, uh, Miles and Peter in one area. Um, there is some moments here where, like, Peter, like, he says a couple things that are, like, really, really dumb. And then, you know, and Gwen's like, no, it's obviously this. And you're like come on, Peter, like, you know, like, I, I wish sometimes that, you know, they wouldn't dumb down Peter, you know, and even if I don't care who the other character is, but to dumb down any main character to make someone else look as smart, you're kind of like, ah, I, I don't really dig on that too much, but it only happens the one time. So I was kind of like, eh, it's fine. And it's not that spider Gwen or Gwen Stacy isn't smart either. She's obviously as smart as Peter, but it was like a common sense thing. And I was like, eh, I feel like Peter probably could have figured that out. It was, it was like a line about uh, Eddie Brock going into a bank at night. He was like, oh, he's just going to the bank. And Gwen's like, at night? That doesn't make any sense. He's like, oh, you're right. And I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's, this is a minor nitpick on dialogue, and it's only one part. Because uh, the rest of the book I thought was fun, and I, I didn't have any other like nitpicky things about it. Uh, it was fun seeing Doc Ock fight Venom and fight all these spider characters and be introduced, I guess, for the first time here. So they're, you know, like the, the thing where they're trying to come up with the name is kind of fun too. Uh, but ultimately in the end, they beat Doc Ock, uh, he gets arrested, and then they talk Venom down and they say, hey, let's try to solve this without fists. Let's, you know, let's try to rationalize with you. And I like that because I remember Swordsman saying that he hopes they don't make villain, you know, Venom just the straight villain in this one. And it looks like they're not. He started off that way where I was like, uh-oh, Swordsman's not going to like this because in the first half of this issue, Venom pretty much is the villain. But in the last half, they do talk him down and they actually get through to Eddie Brock and they help him look for the information he's looking for and he can't find it. But they're like, hey, 
we might have something here and it, it's going to lead to, uh, you know, the boss, whoever Otto Octavius was working for, it's going to lead to them. And that's the guy who kind of screwed you over. So we're going to find out who that is in the next issue. And I don't know if it's going to be like Norman Osborn or if they're going to do a version of the Life Foundation. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm very excited for it nonetheless. So yeah, this was really fun. Um, it was nice to see them actually team up with Venom in this issue. And that's also makes sense because the John Boy Myers cover shows all of them swinging together, even though on this one, it shows them fighting. But this is representative of of the first half of the book and i would say the john boy myers cover is more uh, indicative of the last half of the book so it's kind of fun so it's a typical team up where you like we're going to fight him and then all right now we're going to team up with them we have a common goal and uh, we also want to help him get to the truth because eddie does feel a little lost in this book and he is you know worried about you know he's bonded with the symbiote now and the symbiote wants to eat and he's trying to t you know temper it and he's getting it to not eat uh so again it, it kind of flows in a way at least the character's you know, path flows very much like the Venom movie. And I like that Delilah did that uh, in the writing because uh, who knows if we're going to get that version, a movie version of Eddie in a comic book at any point. Uh, so, that, you know, I know we got that free comic that came with, you know, the movie, if you went and saw it opening weekend, we had that little mini comic and stuff. But this, this is nice having a version that's very close to the movie version of Venom interacting with these other spider characters. It's, it's kind of nice because I don't know if, we're, you know, we might get that in the movies now, but, you know, it, it's I'm curious to see where they go. And I hope Venom is in Spider-Verse 2 in some form. That would be really great, too, or if they set him up for, like, the third Spider-Verse or something. Um, but these books were fun. You know, I think Double Trouble, I like the artwork more than I like the story because, I like, the story is very simplified very kid friendly and that was like eh, i don't have a problem with that overall but the it just the beat some of the beats didn't work for me and some of the things that they did simplify i was just like ah, eh, you could have yeah, I always look for where you can add more drama. It's Peter Parker, so I always kind of want to like, you know, his life always has to kind of be a mess at times, and there has to be like levels of drama, and there it is in that book, but it's like, oh, it's Spider-Man, and he's in costume, so you don't really get the Peter Parker-ness of it. It's just, you know, you, you can imply it, but it's not really there, uh, you know, because it's mainly him in the costume 24-7, and same with Venom and Spider-Gwen, you know, or Ghost Spider. I can't, I, I have trouble calling her Ghost Spider because I love that Spider-Gwen book so much, like the first series. Um, I have all you know the first run of it it was like six issues or five issues and then they renumbered it and it went to like issue 35 or something and i have all of that and i really like that run a lot so i have trouble calling her ghost spider because i haven't read any of the ghost spider stuff uh but uh, yeah overall though i would say pick both these up if you're a completionist i would say if you can find it marvel actions 10 and 11 pick these up definitely because these are a lot of fun i would say if uh, if double trouble doesn't sound like it appeals to you you're probably safe skipping it or waiting for trade uh because it is fun to like go through and, and the artwork is a lot of fun so if you appreciate good animated style artwork i think they did a great job in that book um but if you're an older fan i would say you're probably not going to like the story too much i'm speaking in general and i'm speaking for myself obviously you may that may actually tickle your fancy, the, the the style of writing in that book. But for me, I was just like, eh, I kind of want a little bit more here. So hopefully we'll get that in the next few issues and we'll find that out later. But this one I actually really dig. I think it's really well paced. I think the action in it is really good. The art's fantastic. Um, and, uh, and it is written for a younger audience, but I don't feel like it, not that young. Like I feel like Double Trouble is really aimed for really young there's very little words on each page and and any dialogue bubbles are really simple one two sentences tops whereas this one there's full conversations there's characterizations and stuff and they get to the heart of some of these characters and that's what i like about it so this is more written for teens and i would say that's why probably i like this one a little bit more but let me know your thoughts if you read any of these let me know your thoughts down below and if you got the digital codes for double trouble i know there's two codes so two of you out there should now have issue one if you do let me know your review down below and we'll continue our conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. And we have more Venom stuff coming up. I think I'm going to take uh, mostly a break this week later this weekend. You'll probably see a Toxin review. Uh, I, I set, told some people on Instagram that I would do a review of the Toxin miniseries because I wanted to squeeze that in before the end of the season. So we'll probably do that around Sunday. And uh, that'll be my last Venom vlog for this week because my last one was like an hour long. And I was like, all right, that kind of tapped me out. I, that was a long, it was a long emotional journey to go through the Spider-Man life story uh, again. Uh, you know, reading it for like the fourth time. And then especially this week, you know, some of you heard and, and have sent really great,
great, you know, uh, kind words and prayers, which I appreciate. Uh, my grandma, she did pass away uh, on Sunday, and it was, it's was it been really hard on my mom especially, so I've been trying to be there for my mom and help her out um, and talk to her when she needs someone to talk to. And, uh, you know, my memories of my grandparents, unfortunately, the same thing happened when my grandfather passed away a few years ago. My memories are um, they're, they're not intact and I can remember slivers of things. Um, but my emotional tether to them, it's hard. It, it's really hard because I was trying so hard to remember things about my grandma and all I really know about them is stuff my mom told me. So I know stories about them, but I don't know, like, you know, I can't remember a lot of that stuff. And so it's, it's been a, it's been a rough a uh, few days trying to handle that as well. Uh, but then, like I said, mainly I'm just here trying to be here for my mom because I know it's really tough on her losing her mom. So uh, I appreciate the kind words. I appreciate the kindness and everything and the prayers. Um, that's why I'm kind of, you know, slowing it down a little bit this week. Um, and I'm also still recovering from being sick. I feel a lot better. Obviously, I sound a lot better, um, but my chest still hurts from time to time. And, uh, and my head's been hurting a lot lately, too. And so uh, and I'm also going in for an interview for a potential second job for the holidays because I I'm just hurting so much financially. I was like, I'm pretty much not going to have any days off for the month of December. Uh, so that's also why we're not going to do any Venom vlogs, because I want to try to optimize um, money and I need to focus on, you know, keeping a roof over my head, at least for the holidays. So um, so it's going to be a tight Christmas. It's going to be a, a tough emotionally for the family um, but again all of you guys saying such nice things it meant a lot to me so thank you for doing that and uh, we will have we'll have talks in on Sunday and then next week absolute carnage 5 comes out and I think the um, uh, the Captain Marvel one shot absolute carnage book comes out so we'll probably review those together um, just to kind of simplify the episodes because we're running out we only have like seven episodes left before the finale of, of this season and I'm also trying to get to 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year if possible uh, we're only 97 away right now so if you know anyone out there who likes Venom who likes comic books and movie discussions uh, feel free to send them a video that you like of mine and see if they like it and maybe they'll subscribe uh, I will in December still put up videos just not Venom vlog stuff we're going to probably cover all the 2099 stuff that Marvel's doing I'm a big 2099 fan so I was thinking about doing 2099 month uh, leading up to the end of 2019 uh, so you'll probably see those videos in, starting in December and then um, and then also I got to get through the Friday the 13th reviews movie reviews and then we're also going to probably throw in the Predator movie reviews after we get through Friday 13th. So I'm going to stick to those uh, and Ghost Rider between now and the end of the year. Uh, and then we'll just do the last seven Venom episodes to wrap up this season. So uh, that's all the updates I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you making it through this long video and I will have more for you very, very soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.